This video walks through finishing parts at home with a black oxide coating. I'm using EPI's InstaBlack Trial Kit that I believe is a surface deposit instead of a conversion. It's lighter duty than a hot black oxide process, meaning it does wear off, but because it's done at room temperature, it's very easy to use and it's a lot safer because it doesn't exhaust noxious gases. I have a little setup here in my kitchen and I'll walk through each of the products in the kit in order of use. The first step is to use eClean, which is a liquid soak cleaner to remove oils and fluids. The basic idea is that you want to get the cleanest surface for the best results. No oils, no cutting fluids, no nothing. This is the only step that's done hot. It's done at about 150 degrees, so you'll want to get yourself a cheap steel container to mix the solution. After cleaning, the part is rinsed and then put into EPREP, which is a surface activator, basically an acid that etches the surface of your part so that the copper selenium can better adhere to it. Again, the part is rinsed and then it is placed into InstaBlack 333, and this is the part that actually deposits the copper selenide onto your part. It only takes a couple of minutes before you can actually see that part start to blacken. After that, the part is rinsed again and then placed into the final step which is to soak the part in a sealant, uh, typically in oil or wax. This is what gives the most protection to your part. The part is immersed for only a short time but the sealant is left on, it's not rinsed, and the part darkens as the surface absorbs the sealant uh, over the next 24 hours. EPI has other first finishing treatments but this is really what's most commonly used. The products are shipped as a concentrate, so you need to add water to them. I've gotten some distilled water so that I can have the best, purest solution, and you can use the original bottle as a measuring thing to mix it at the 9 to 1 ratio or 4 to 1 ratio as needed. Um, and you'll end up with about 3 quarts of liquid that gives you plenty of room in the container to actually work on the part. After you're done, the sealant can go right back in its original bottle, but since everything else has been diluted with water, you'll need another container. Here I'm just using a Poland spring container. It's a lot cheaper than going out and buying something special to hold the solutions until you use them next. Uh, what I'm using are basically just the buckets that you get from the paint department, plastic, a uh, little over a gallon. Each of this trial kit doesn't make a gallon so you have plenty of room to work. And if you've noticed, I've taken a smaller size and I've drilled a bunch of holes in it to make a strainer. That way I can dip my parts in and bring them back out and put them in the rinse water and it works really well. Before doing this project, and after you have your materials, you should wash those off because there might be greases or oils um, from the manufacturing process, especially with these uh, plastic things that might have a mold release agent that could affect your results. Um, before putting it in the cleaner, I actually clean it with some other stuff. I first use a degreaser, um, you know, uh, simple green or, or something like that, purple power, uh, whatever you have, and then I'm, I washed it off with Dawn dishwashing detergent and uh, now I'm giving it a little final scrub. Uh, to help get the rest off. What, what these are, are actually just bolts that are uh, hold the legs on to a, a Wogan lathe and figured why not, you know, this is a, a pretty good thing to, to use as a sample. The parts are first placed in the E-Clean. Remember it's on the stove, it's about 150 degrees. You should be able to put your hands in it, but not for very long, hot, but not boiling. So I'm just picking these parts out of, of the uh, degreaser and I'm going to rinse them off in water. You can see my homemade colander here is pretty snazzy. So I'm, I'm putting my parts into my, my little strainer, keeping the parts separate. And then I, I put it in there and I'm just going to do that for one or two minutes. Um, you have to be careful with this. I'm, I'm agitating it a little bit so that it'll, uh, I can get the undersides of the parts. After a minute or two in the e-prep, we'll take them out. You might not be able to see it because of the, the darkness, but it's uh, etched. It's a dull gray instead of a shiny gray, or shiny metal. So the acid is definitely doing its job.
and I'm giving it a, a cold rinse to avoid cross-contamination. And then if, if you notice I'm wearing gloves, the um, any kind of oil that gets on these things is going to have a bad effect on your blackening process. Uh, so I've, I've worn these gloves, I've washed these gloves, maybe in between stages I might even you know, rinse my gloves too, so I don't bring things over from one stage to the next. I'm doing this in a bucket because I don't really want that acid to go anywhere else. As you can see, I'm, I'm switching buckets because I don't want to be taking my strainers from one solution to the other. But this is a blackening solution, and it only has to work uh, two to five minutes. Uh, I set a little timer there. I've been doing it for about two and a half minutes. Giving it a slight agitation so I can get the other side of the parks. And you can see they're starting to blacken already. Okay, it's been a, you know, a couple minutes, two, three minutes. You can see how the steel is all darkened now from being in the Insta Black. So I'm going to take them off and do that final rinse. Last step is just to dip them in this uh, sealant. This helps the uh, oils, you know, soak into the surface. And whoops, uh, I've been told that the uh, product will continue blackening. After only a minute in the sealant, you can see the difference between the uh, bolt before and after it went in. It's definitely a lot darker and because we're not rinsing it off, this oil will continue to soak in over the next day. Here's a collection of parts that have been done with this process. You can see they're blackening nicely, and this has only been about an hour after I did them. As first impressions go, I think EPI's kit is pretty easy to use. It also gives me a really dark finish, a lot darker than I've been able to get from a bluing compound. I know this video looks like a commercial for EPI, but I really don't have any affiliation with the company. I just wanted to darken some parts. I didn't really know what I was getting into, and I thought that, hey, maybe somebody would want to see my experience so they can make up their mind for themselves. Anyway, thanks for watching. Good luck with your projects.